The Frontier Conference is a tough one for men's basketball in the NAI, where it doesn't matter if you're the top seed in the conference or the bottom seed in the conference. It seems like any team on any given night can walk away with a win, and that has certainly been the case for years past. And as we get ready to preview the 2020-2021 season, it seems like that will continue to be the case as well. Last year it was the Carroll College Fighting Saints, University of Providence Argos, and the Lewis Clark State Warriors that earned bids into the NAI National Tournament that was subsequently canceled due to COVID-19. With the Warriors moving to the Cascade Conference earlier this year, Frontier Conference teams will play against one another four times this year with two back-to-back -back series. Carroll College head coach Kurt Paulson says despite the Warriors leaving, he knows the Frontier Conference will still have some stiff competition. This will be new for, for most everybody. No one's really used to this format. And then it was unfortunate that LC State decided to move um, west to the Cascade Conference. But, you know, our, our league's still going to be really good. And, and playing back-to-back -back nights will be an adjustment for everybody. The Fighting Saints wrapped up last season with a 24-9 and record, and Paulson says he expects this year to be an interesting one, not only on the court, but also off the court due to the pandemic. Well, they've had a lot thrown at them because – not not only with the COVID protocols, but there's been a lot of remote learning uh, at Carroll and in most schools uh, for the obvious reasons. So, you know, the the kids have had a lot more academic pressures because it's harder. It's harder doing the remote learning. You're just not getting that in person personal touch. So, been really proud of our guys for handling the the academic side of it. The Providence Argos finished last year with a 24-8 and record with offensive threats like Zacchaeus Darko Kelly, Dawson Fowler, and Rasheed Stocks, to name a few. Argos head coach Steve Keller said this year, more than ever, it's going to be imperative players stay healthy because any and everyone can get called upon to fill a role in case someone is not eligible to play. You got to stay healthy. Uh, you know, Ashley has had five knee surgeries on his one knee, so um, what you don't know is... You know, they've been working on their own, but it's not the same intensity, same. so you don't know what they're like from March till, you know, December. That's a long time to take off where they're not playing. They definitely haven't played any five-on-five five and stuff like that. So, But if you look at the other side of it, you know, we haven't practiced for two months either, like a lot of them, so we could be fresh. In Haver, Sean Hughes is in his 19th year of coaching the Montana State Northern Lights, and last year, the Lights were no slouches themselves, posting a 20-12 and 12 record. They did miss the national tournament after drawing a first-round conference tournament game against Lewis Clark State. And though this year is full of uncertainty, Hughes and his players are looking at the positives this year is bringing. We got to look at the bright side there and just be able to just to be able to go to the gym and be able to work out and be able to lift and be able to condition and be able to do all that stuff. Um, we're just trying to keep it in the bright side, keep it on the positive and, and know that, you know, it's going to happen. We've had these targets, dates come and go, um, and that may happen the rest of the year. Probably will. Uh, but at some point, we'll be playing somebody. And so we want to be ready for that. And uh, that's that's our mindset. At Montana Tech in Butte, the Ore Diggers had a bit of an up and down season that ended with an 18 and 12 record. The down eight of the Ore Diggers losses on the year came during three game and five game losing streaks. The up, the Ore Diggers notched the program's first victory against an NCAA Division One team when they beat the Montana Grizzlies 74 to 72. They beat the third, eighth and 17th ranked teams in the NAI and ended the regular season on a four game win streak. And as head coach Adam Hyatt and his squad embark into a sea of uncertainty this year, he's not exactly thrilled about what this season could be. One of the things that that coaches despise more than anything else is uncertainty. And, you know, this it, this whole year is going to be one of uncertainty where, you know, we you from a day to day basis, you just don't know who you're going to have available with you. Um, you know, with the protocols that we have right now, if there's if there's just one single you know, positive test and the entire team is shut down for 14 days, you know, and you can't do anything. And so that those, those are tremendous setbacks. And, you know, so, so yeah, it's, it is, it is a challenge. And we talk about our depth and our depth is a, is a great component to our, to our team, which it is. We have a lot of players that can play, but the uncertainty of who we're going to have available from day to day, day to day is going to cause a lot of challenges for us. At Montana Western, Mike Larson knows he and the Bulldogs haven't had the best of seasons during his tenure with an overall record of 20-40 and 40 across the last two years. 
but this year Larson said he thinks it will be one where the Bulldogs are able to turn a page now that the players in his program have had the opportunity to understand what type of culture he's trying to create. We have five returners from last year, uh, even though only a couple of them played. Uh, we had red shirts that are, are you know, right now playing in the starting five or, or they're in that rotation. So they understood what what stuff and what matters to me. Um, they, you know, family, hard work, commitment, all of those things that come into play. And um, everybody else had no other choice but to just jump on board. I mean, when you show up the very first day and it's 5 a.m. waits and we come running out that door instead of walking out like some people might want to, 5 a.m. you're hooping and hollering and running. And everybody's like, well, I guess this is what we're supposed to do. So they just kind of followed suit, um, kind of made it a little easier on me. And in Billings, the Rocky Mountain College Batland Bears and Bill Dracosin had a really rough year last year. The Batland Bears finished the season with a 7-22 and record and went 1-17 and in conference play. Dracosin said last year was obviously not the best of seasons, but his team never gave up on him. And that their team's record at the end of the year was not by a product of a lack of effort, but rather a lack of athleticism. And this year, that is not the case. They share the ball extremely well. We're a lot more athletic. One of our biggest problems last year was not playing hard, was not commitment, was not, you know, fighting and giving us everything. We just had a little lack of athleticism uh, last year that we normally have. And um, it doesn't take long in the Frontier Conference. It's, it's competitive and as many great athletes that we have nowadays to really see how that uh, affects you if you don't have some pretty good athletes out on the floor. We're definitely going to be more athletic this year. And while there are certainly a handful of unknowns regarding the 2020-2021 Frontier Conference men's basketball season, there is one thing for sure. Frontier Conference play begins on December 5th at 7 o'clock. You can catch the highlights on your local MTN station or on MontanaSports.com. For Montana Sports, I'm Sam Hoyle.